in this video, we're gonna talk tech because that's what you guys like. Ugh, drives me bonkers because I love talking about sales and wedding albums and all that fun stuff that I like doing. But my most popular video on this channel is an off-camera flash video. So guess what? I'm gonna give you an intro to flash, the ins and outs of on-camera flash, then getting it off the camera onto a light stand, and then why you need a strobe. And I get very, very intimate with this one because he's been with me since the beginning, 20 years and counting. I'll get into that. And then at the end, I'm gonna show you my most favorite piece of equipment that I own that everyone needs, regardless of what kind of photography you are. Like, it will change your life. It's like a weird thing. It's not a flash, but you're gonna love it. Just stick around. All right, let's just jump right in. Everything about flash, woohoo! Very scary. It's just safe to not use a flash at all and use available light, which guess what's available? Flash! Anyway, rant over. Welcome. Hi. The thing is, this is the normal trajectory of a photographer. We go available light, figure out how to use our camera. It becomes a passion. Oh my gosh. And then if you want to really get more interesting results and set yourself apart from every other mom photographer, you have to learn how to use a flash. If you look at my photography website, almost everything on that website is with flash, but it all looks very natural. I'm all about just enhancing, but I don't like being limited by available light because of maybe, again, as a wedding photographer, maybe the action is not happening in front of a gorgeous window. It usually isn't. The lighting in most places, especially hotel rooms where they're getting ready, is atrocious. So I love flash. The standard way to do it is to first get a flash, put it on your camera, and that's fine. This is how most people start. You might actually learn to like bounce it off a ceiling, bounce it off a wall. That's great, that's fine. It's a great place to start. Every photographer uses on-camera flash at some point during a wedding day. I have one camera usually on-camera flash, one camera off-camera flash. That's typically how I have my two cameras set up on my, on my body during the wedding. And then the other thing you might wanna do is just put it on a light stand. I, again, I'll use a monopod, I'll have a lighting assist, walking around the wedding reception with me with a monopod so that that way I can like tell them to move a little bit and put it in a better position better lighting or more interesting lighting a light stand is great a monopod you can even put it on a tripod whatever you have lay it around talk to any old-school photographer we have way too many light stands we'll sell you one we'll give it to you whatever buys a beer we'll give you a light stand please we have so many I have like four of them in front of me doing all these lights right now okay and then the next thing you want to do is you want to upgrade to like some sort of really powerful strobe. So this one is actually an older model, an older brand, so I'm not really gonna talk about the brand itself because there's better, smaller, cooler versions that are easier to pack. But I do wanna talk about how freaking cool this thing is, why I love it, and why I love this bracket and the stand it's on. That's actually my favorite part is the bracket and the stand that it's on. First of all, well, let me just, I'll just sidetrack because I'm excited and then I'll jump right into the rest of the stuff. The reason why you're here is to learn all about flash. So what's cool about this guy, I call it the beast because it's big, that's fine, but it can overpower the sun. And that is very, very important if you're gonna be a wedding photographer because everyone gets married in the worst possible months of the year for lighting. <laughs> if you're a couple watching this, do not do that. I charge more for July weddings for a reason because I'm hot, everyone's shiny, and that sun is bright until like 7 p.m. It's horrible. So I need a flash that can actually take on the sun in July midday when we're doing freaking fracking family portraits. Ugh. Okay, if I was gonna get married, I would totally switch the, <laughs> the whole wedding day around. But anyway, what's great about this is I have this can, this camera. This flash, this is a Q flash. I have it always set up on this bracket. This bracket has um, an umbrella holder even, like ready to go. It has a little hole for it. I have the battery pack is right here hung on there. And I have my pocket wizard radio slave trigger is right on here. So it's ready to go. I literally leave this all the time set up just like this. And I buy cars specifically knowing that if I put the seat back, I can fit it just like this in the back of my car. Because I work alone on most weddings. I've photographed for 20 years by myself, 90% of my weddings. So I need to be quick and easy and mobile. So, and then the stand that it's on is called a cheetah stand. And again, I know that's not why you're here, but please buy a cheetah stand. They will save your life, you're gonna love them. This one's actually a, another one. And, they, and what it does is the bottom of it collapses and it just comes with you. That's why I'm sidetracking and talking about it right now. It literally, it's like the best. It just collapses, all the legs go whoop. So you don't have to dink around with like trying to do it. You just lower it, grab it, throw it away and go. Just get a cheetah stand. This is clearly an advertisement for cheetah stand, even though I have no affiliation with them. I don't have a referral link or anything, but they're the best. 
but I highly recommend some sort of a beast of a light like this, okay? Um, and if you want to know, the bracket is a just right bracket, but I'm sure you can find them. So again, I don't want to get into this light specifically because there's newer, better models like um, Prophoto, I think is one and some other ones. And the, what's great about this, let me just get into that for a second and then I'll go, and then I'll go back to like kind of your starter fl off camera flash setups, but I'm just gonna like geek out over this one for a, more, a minute more just to get you like suckered in because you got to have a good flash. If you're doing weddings in churches, for example, a lot of times us photographers are treated like redhead step, redheaded stepchildren. We are not allowed anywhere near the action. It's horrible. I do have a trick for that and remind me and I'll do a video on like how you can get around it. You know, if you're in the, if you're stuck up in the balcony, what are you going to do? Or if it's, oh, there's a church in my town. It's a gorgeous church. It's really old. It's beautiful. But it's horrible because the entire altar is like bright white lit. It's all lit up. And so when you're, if you're a normal person trying to shoot that available light, it's not going to work because all the lights come in from behind them. So you're not going to get a good straight on altar photo of the couple getting married in this church. So you have to have a strobe. These little flashes, you're not, unless you're right on top of them, they're not going to work. So that's the point of it, right? That's why I'm going on this diatribe and like my little love letter to the beast here. So you can stick this all the way up in the balcony and jack it up and it will fill in that bride and groom. I'm telling you, you got to freaking light your ceremony. Put it up in the balcony or put it in the back of the church where you're not blocking. But anyway, these speed lights, they just don't fill enough. They don't, they're not powerful enough. You'd have to have them fairly close by for them to make a difference. So yes, it's great that you're here learning about off-camera flash, but you really need to get some sort of bigger, burlier flash also. You definitely need something you can throw on the camera. And technically I could use this on the camera, but like, geez, man, it's too big. No way. So you got to get a speed light, but you want to eventually get a big burly flash, especially if you're going to do weddings. Okay. I use this to light up bridal parties. I'll use this to light up family photos. Speed lights are too weak. Um, again, during the summertime, May, June, July, August, even here in upstate New York where it's like gray most of the time, the speed lights outdoors just aren't going to put up enough flash unless you're right in front of somebody. So you need to have something like this and then you can do really cool stuff like photograph against a lake. So actually, let me give you a little quick little tip on how you can set yourself apart from Uncle Bob. You know, those photographers that come, the dentists, the uncle of somebody, whatever. And he's got this whole rig. He's got like $4,000 worth of camera gear. And he's just like following you around, telling you what to do all day, even though he's a guest and you're being paid. So this is my trick is actually, I will literally photograph against something I know he can't do. And this is the difference between an available light photographer too. I, I get just better shots because I can utilize the whole venue. I can photograph against a lake and actually get the lake to show up because I have the beast flash to fill in the bridal party or the, or the parents or whoever. And again, I leave it all set up like this. I actually have a hook in my closet that this fits on. I just lift it up, put it on the hook and it's just against the wall in my closet. <laughs> okay, so anyway, I do wanna talk really quickly about your starter setup, okay? Cause I wanna point out a couple things that, that give you away <laughs> how we can tell that you're a newbie, all right? Tip number one of how I can tell you're a newbie photographer. This gives you away every time. It's when you have the flash pointing straight up, but you're outside. Or you're in a dark ceiling. Or you're in a place where the ceiling is 9,000 feet tall. Here's a question for you. What is that bouncing off of? The answer is nothing. That's how I know you're a newbie. If you don't have anything to bounce this off of, it does not need to be above you. It's not bouncing off anything. So I see that all the time. I have to break all of my second shooters of that habit. I'm just like, dude, what are you bouncing off of? Nothing. Don't point in the air. For the people who know how to use flash, it actually just gives you away. <laughs> So you really want to play, and this is why you have to play, and this is why uh, high five to you that you're hanging around on YouTube learning about Flash, because that's the thing. It's like, okay, I'm in my office. This is my gym, or it used to be my office. Now it's my home gym. And, you know, this is fine because it's like, what, 10 feet, 10 foot ceilings. Well, sure, I can bounce it off of that ceiling, and then it's going to bounce back. Great. Perfect. I can also twist it around. It has a little button on the side. This is the Nikon SB800 Flash. 
you can bounce it off the wall, but because this is a gray wall, you're gonna lose a lot of light by doing that. It's better to bounce it off of something white. Hot tip in the wedding industry, we'll bounce it off of some guy's shirt. We'll bounce it off that white, big old white poofy wedding dress. <laughs> like anything white. You find a bigger guy with a white shirt on, that's a like, a, you know, or a wall. So if you're doing a cake cutting and you have a white wall on one side and the bride and groom over here cutting the cake, you can bounce it off the wall and have it come back, it softens it. So you do want to bounce flash. Bouncing flash is like, great. This is so, you know, again, if you're just starting out, I get it. You want to start on camera. Um, you know, the thing you can do is, and actually I have a tutorial on my YouTube channel about how to make your own for like under $5, but you can make little rogue flash bender. So check for that video on my channel and I'll link to it here in the description, but you wrap it around this and it, and it, blocks the back so it makes it so that the light doesn't go behind you because what why do you need it behind you you're losing light so you can attach it to your flash and it shoots the whole flash forward so that's a nice way to do it so you would tilt the flash up a little and then you have this thing here and you can just make your own i show you how to make it with craft foam on my uh in that rogue flash bender diy tutorial but you can just do that and that does a lot of really cool stuff so go check out that video to see the difference between the how to like what it does to the skin tones and stuff. That way you can have it on camera, but it looks like available light. And this is the key. I like it to look like available light too, but I like to be able to control the light. And so that's why I wanna use all these different flashes and all these different speed lights and all that kind of stuff, okay? So that's like quick tips for on-camera flash is doing that. I've talked about it in all my videos because I love it, but worst case scenario, use this little cable. So these things are really, really cheap. You can find, you can actually like go to an estate sale, <laughs> go to a photographer going out of business sale, like old school photographers have thousands of these things. The reason I like these is you, part of it goes into the camera and part of it goes to the flash. And that way you can pretend you have off-camera flash but in your hand and then it's connected to the camera so it's super reliable. So if you wanna get that flash off the camera, your speed light off the camera, start with something like this, a cable, because then you can get to know, like you can really get a better sense, you have more control because it's in your hand. Then move on to radio triggers and things like that. Um, if you haven't been here before, I do use a D Nikon D750 and I actually use the pop-up flash to trigger my, my other off-camera flashes, my Nikon speed lights. So that's actually one of my most popular video on this channel, which is crazy because I teach you like actually sales techniques on how to pay for all this. If you guys like these tech tutorials, I'll keep doing them. So leave me a comment, you know? All right, so that's the basics of on-camera flash. And then again, like I said, your next step is to get one onto a light stand. Um, you can put them on a tripod, wherever, but if you're, especially if you're doing wedding receptions, you got to have one like for the toast, the cake cutting, whatever. You just want more interesting lighting because a lot of times the on-camera flash, especially if you're running around the reception, the cake cutting happens quickly if you're not in cahoots with the DJ or maybe they start doing their parent dances or whatever. All of a sudden you're like, ah, I don't have the right kind of lighting. So I like to have all these lights on the dance floor ready to go or near the cake or whatever. Um, so that the, having something like this, a light stand again, a collapsible one that you can just grab and go, it's the key. But a nice speed light like this is great to put, so you could put it here and then the couple would be over here cutting the cake and that way you can angle it towards their faces. The problem with cake cutting photos, and maybe that'll be a different video, if you like that kind of content, content like how to photograph each part of the day, just leave me a comment because I go by what you guys want to see, not just what I want to talk about. So anyway, the, the problem is most wedding cakes are white. Annoying. And then they're on a white table. Annoying. Guess what it does to the flash? Bounces off all that white and uh, that's all overblown, blown out, and then the couple is darker. So if you have an off-camera flash and you angle it down, you don't want it too high, but you want to angle it onto the bride and groom's face, then you can get the cake is not blown out. So it's a little bit of an art. You have to practice with that a little bit. You have to kind of play and learn how to do it. Again, if you have a ceiling you can bounce this off of, that's fine. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can do a cake cutting, obviously. Uh, I like to get creative with it. But I highly recommend you just have like a quick, quick, easy flash. Like this one I would leave near the DJ booth. And that one is my like portable one for like running around. I'll also bring that if I know I'm going to do a big group photo. Um, sometimes you get stuck doing that at the reception, which I don't recommend like 30 guests. Like, you know, oh, I need all my cousins or whatever. Sometimes you get that kind of stuff and usually what I'll do is an on-camera and one on a stand just to give it more of a balanced light to make sure everybody has some light on them. 
So that's the intro to Flash, everything you need to know about Flash, off-camera Flash, how to get it off your camera, why you need a strobe, how to use it on the camera, how to use it on a light stand, and obviously I would love to hear if any of that stuff is confusing, please tell me. I can take critiques. I went to art school. <laughs> and obviously if you have a comment on how you're using it, I'd love to hear what anyone's using for a strobe because there's a lot of brands that I haven't used because I've used this for 20 years. It works like a champ. <sighs> My key flash, I love it. Again, you know, if you have any questions about doing off-camera stuff or you want to see more content like this, just let me know. I like talking about wedding albums, pricing, and sales, but I know it's not as sexy, but you know what's really sexy is when a couple and they spend so much money that you can go buy new toys to play with. If you like that kind of stuff, dig around my channel because that's my jam. I'm all about selling products, running a profitable business, and guess what? You can budget in to your prices from toys like these. You don't need to pay for that. If you have a job still, that should not be paying for it. You should be paying for it with your pricing. So stick around, dig around. That, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, get into the Art of Selling uh, playlist on my channel because then I go through all my secret tips on how I sell with ease, how I make it so that my customers just ask me to buy stuff and the pricing and blah, 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 blah. But if you want more tech tutorials, just let me know what kind of stuff you're struggling with. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, I appreciated that you swung by. If you liked this video and I helped you like kind of get an idea of what the heck I to do with getting started with flash photography, please hit the like button, hit subscribe, you know, find me on social if you're interested in chatting more. And also obviously subscribe and hit that bell icon because that helps everybody. All right, thanks for watching, bye.